And going into that match, Kevin, Nadal had won 15 consecutive matches on clay that dated back to May of 2010. And it just shows, you know, what a difference a couple years make, Nadal being out for seven months. Zabios, I'm sure, looked at Nadal as a legend, as a god, and, and probably played the match of his career in that final. And Rafa just too good once again as he takes the opening four games. It was so remarkable too is there's going to be a time you got to think for Horatio down the road where he says see that single trophy up oh, there. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the first ever tournament that I won. Go ahead and guess who I beat wow. in that final. It was it's his first title and only title as a professional. On the ATP World Tour. So what a what a memory that'll be. Who was for the last Zabayos. person to beat Nadal on clay prior to that. Happened in 2010, and it was in Madrid. That's all I'm going to tell you. Well, 2010 belonged to one man that year, didn't it? That wasn't the man, though. You're thinking of Novak Djokovic. I'll give you one more hint. That is. It's another guy who's had other years that have belonged to him. No, no. He, he's another Spaniard. That's the last Nico? hint you get. You're hiding that paper from me. I'm not. I'm <laughs> I don't blame you. Some, someone who was playing some great tennis, who's done well against Nadal at times in his career, Fernando Verdasco. That was at the ATP World Tour event, the 1000 in Madrid. Can you see one of I was going to tell you another left-handed Spaniard, but that, that would have, like, given it away. come on. Oh, you would have said Feliciano Lopez, probably. <laughs> no, I remember now that you mentioned it, I remember the match. I couldn't recall that he so long ago. Verdasco not in Acapulco, last year's finalist. This is getting ugly really quickly. Can you sit down the court for 16 minutes? It has been utter domination by Nadal. This crowd coming out thinking maybe it would be a challenge or maybe just coming out to see Rafa. the comment Kevin that Alund has only played what seven matches at this level now he's coming out in front of a jam-packed crowd here in Acapulco on the main court against the king of clay you know he's got to be nervous he just has to be Yeah, and that's why I was talking, sort of alluding to the idea that maybe, you know, early here, he's just happy to be blocking it back. He's hit giving a lot of short balls and all, and that's not going to be effective. But at the same time, just to try to find a way to get a feel for the match. It's going to take maybe this whole set to just kind of find a way to really feel as if, all right, now I can just start have, hit swinging away. the Argentine is if it takes you that long to get a sense of what you're doing out there and you're caught in the moment and you can't relax by the time you start to get to that point the match is over it's gone by you you got to come out and grab it fast
And even when he has an easy shot, uh, he can't execute it. So that's what happens when you're getting beaten badly by someone, when you're outclassed, you're outmatched. Even the easy balls become extremely difficult. You start to press. Nadal has a on that. the run here, but doesn't read the pass and has to play a pretty defensive volley. Nadal was well out of position there. Still looking to me like he's favoring that leg, but even though he's winning easily, it doesn't look like he's totally comfortable within his own body. Rafa having a little trouble preparing this third break of serve to get to five love. He's had three looks and hasn't been able to convert. Two of the three break points resulting in unforced errors that have allowed Alund to stay in the fifth game. As much as they love this 2005 champion and the man known as Rafa, a sympathetic heart for the underdog. Oh, they're saying, come on, guy, get on the board. Get off the schneid. You know, when you drop the ball short against Nadal, you're just asking for it. Nadal working the ball around beautifully. And, uh, Look at how he just uses all of the real estate out there. And that's how you dictate a point. Fifth game took eight minutes. The first four combined took 15. So the longest fight from Alun still comes up short. And it's all Rafa Nadal in the opening set in Acapulco. For 
early questions about Rafa and how his knee would hold up and how his movement would be in this second round match. So far, so good. Hasn't really had to be tested that much because Alun doesn't have anything that could hurt Nadal. But it has to be played, and it'll be interesting to see if he can get through this match very quickly in under an hour. He'll have not quite just about 22 hours or so to prepare for his quarterfinal tomorrow night. And that's a lot of rest that is much needed on what are becoming weary knees already through just three events. Tempo. Opening set from the Abierto Mexicano, Mexican Open, 20th anniversary. And 2005 champion Nadal looking to get himself the opening set in less than a half an hour as he serves for a one set advantage. Incredible perspiration coming off in the doll right now. That's amazing. And it's pretty muggy. It's muggy, but the other guy's not sweating that much. Although he's sweating that he can't get a game. Well, he might have been sweating so much before the match <laughs> that he's got nothing <laughs> left. Even when Alun has an easy shot, he doesn't play it. Goes to the lob. <laughs> 